two things in one pot, my king. You can't, you can't. Does does your wife even know you are in this space? Does your wife know you are in this space as we speak right now? Does she know that you are trying to get royalties for her? Does she know your plan? Does she know you're even in this space as we speak right now? Does she know? It's not like you right now. defending. We want to watch what you are just lying. Almighty, when I told him a monkey frogsman, almighty. Yes, guys. Uh, can I just drop a different topic so that maybe we can move along? Uh, some of us are trying to, you know, to be pioneers in this cannabis industry space, uh, like this current project that we are currently trying to pursue to open a cannabis coffee shop. Uh, so that also we can make sure we bring in other black people to have cannabis licenses because this this can be a generational wealth creation opportunity for us as black people since cannabis was legalized 2018 so it is critical that we have more black people in the cannabis uh, space uh, to make sure that it is not monopolized just like other industries that were monopolized before we were smart as black people before we were, we know we had technology uh, that would propel us forward. So now it's the opportunity so that uh, we, we, we can monopolize, I mean, we can take over this industry as black people moving forward. So for those that are interested in the cannabis industry, uh, they can, you know, contact me via DM so that we can empower each other. I feel like this space it is not being used to its fullest potential to empower each other as black people. So I believe that it is critical that this cannabis industry take over because now what they are trying to do is white people are trying to make sure what the 10 years from now, black people will not be able to, to compete with them in the cannabis industry space. So, before, like back in the days, uh, my parents were, were not well versed about certain things, also not understanding the value chain. So we we, we, we have people who are educated here, people who say they are that, they are this, fine, it's good. Let's put the education into good use by making sure what we do not become employees, but become employers and also creating generational wealth, creating wealth that will live beyond us. That's all I have okay. to say. Okay, okay so Bodhi, when uh, what has the alcohol industry and the uh, and liquor being sold in black townships and black um, uh, liquor traders done to the black communities? Um, what positive outcome has come from, from that? What positive outcome has come from that? Uh, I wouldn't say positive because there's nothing good that they, okay, fine, the jobs, you can look at the jobs part, but see people got employed, uh, other people got you know, better financially by owning those institutions but let's not focus on the alcohol but because we know what alcohol has done to the black community or to the African community, so, because I don't like to use the word black so, okay, fine. So you don't think that weed is going to do the same thing and that's the reason why they're legalizing it? Nah, it's not going to be the same thing because, one, if, you, if, you, if you've if you seen users of cannabis, not just people who smoke it, I'm talking about the, the products that can come out, out of the plant. It is not just for smoking. You're talking about the it's one that... Wow. We need to look beyond. We need to look beyond the recreation part. We also need to look wow. at, at at the fact that looking at how what people are consuming. Wow. Yeah. Okay. They are bound to to, to have cancer in the future. So it is very critical that we produce the necessary medication that will speak to the DNA of the African child. A medication that will not have side effects. That okay, would be so that would come with the CBD plant. 
Wait, okay, CBD plant. What are you? Are you a horticulturist, uh, a pharmaceutical specialist? Like, do you make medicines or anything like that? Have you studied these things? Do you have a PhD in these things? Uh, uh, what I can tell you is that uh, currently we have a cannabis license. No, I'm talking about medical. You don't need the qualification. Other knowledge. No, in I know it's wait, wait. I'm not talking about the license. I'm not talking about having a license for cannabis. What I'm talking about is do you have medical qualifications? Do you have medical knowledge, pharmaceutical knowledge? Okay, you do not have pharmaceutical knowledge. Wait, wait, wait. More knowledge. Speak. Wait, it's not about more knowledge. I'm not talking about the licensing and selling a product. Because the selling of products, that's very easy to do. Can you speak with authority about the mental and psychological effects of prolonged cannabis use, whether it be recreational, whether it be through consumption and everything else? Because we know that anything that um, is a psychotropic, is a hallucinogenic or anything like that, right, that affects your mind state. Because this is something that affects your mind state, just like alcohol also affects your mind state. But cannabis does affect your mind state. If you think that now, with all the other problems... You're talking about the TXC plant, right? I'm not done. Wait, I'm just saying... I'm just saying cannabis in, in general. I'm saying with all the the, the, the the problems that we have as African people, with all the traumas that we have, the child molestation that people have survived, the generational um, uh, poverty that people have had to escape from, the depraved mentality. Because you look at just this space alone. The people that attack me on this space, right, attack me because I'm proud of being self-employed. I'm proud of being able to work for myself. That's just on on basic things, just on basic things, I get attacked for that. Now, I'm saying people with that sort of mentality, you want to pump them and feed them with something that's going to alter their mind state, that is going to stop them from actually having motivation. Because what happens with dopamine is that dopamine is what gives you your motivation for action. And if you smoke weed all day, you can literally feel like you're doing a lot without accomplishing anything because that high and that dopamine gives you that feeling as if you have done something and you could have wasted your whole day smoking and getting high and now we want to come onto spaces and because it's a commercial opportunity because we can make money just like taxi drivers who drive in unroadworthy cars we want to load this thing full with 20 people and we don't give a fuck if this car crashes and what the consequences are because we haven't studied what it takes to actually know that this cannabis plant is actually doing good if we know that this person can use can someone use weed for 70 years and still be fine? You're watching, you're watching Mike Tyson, watching Serena Williams playing tennis, and we've seen him now. He's been smoking weed, he's been promoting weed, and he's talking to himself. But just imagine that. What, what type of advertisement is that for weed? You look at Abu Lil Wayne, Abandaba Peminzang, hold on. Look at Abu Lil Wayne, Abandaba Peminzang, 24 7, 365. You understand what I'm saying? who smoked weed, never smoked any other drugs. And I said, no, they found a zip on a package. What's in our side? And we know that weed can cause and trigger schizophrenia in people who've got history of schizophrenia and, and severe mental health problems in um, uh, their family history. We know that, wait, 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 wait. We know that people who've got schizophrenia, bipolar, and everything else, right, in their family, like immediate family, like siblings. With, uh, with yeah, siblings. I know. At 10 times, can I explain the level of knowledge I have? Ten times, I'm, I'm saying they're 10 times more, they're 10 times more likely to then have a severe mental breakdown or have a severe mental episode. Those are the things that we know. How, so I then, to how prudent is it? Wait, I understand that. How prudent is it then that someone who doesn't have a PhD Ria, is Can I explain? Can you guess guys? Can you guess guys? Because this is a piece and and you know that Uzo Kuluma Abu P is a my guy. No, my guys. Can you guess? No, of THC and CBD. CBD is the weed that doesn't have the hallucinogen in it. Then THC. Actually, CBD is produced by the male male plant of cannabis. Then with THC is the female part of cannabis. So if that one contains the THC, that's where I want to make the, the distinguishing. 
part with CBD products, it doesn't contain hallucinogens, but it has effects that are that are similar to that of THC. Meaning, you can take CBD and be calm. Just like Nota is saying, the issues of mental health. Someone who's having mental issues can take the CBD part of the plant. Simnige ema CBD product. No other one that we say to Nota, my guy. Because he needs that. Thank you. Oh, no, no, let's not insult each other. This is a teaching moment. I'm trying to to make sure I remove the stigma that goes with cannabis. So I, I'm trying to enlighten people also with the issue of education. One doesn't need a PhD to have knowledge of certain things. You only need to spend more hours in doing one and the same thing over and over again. For instance... People spend a lot of money buying things produced by Japanese people that side who have mastered the art of production of an item for more than 10 years. So me, I've dealt with weed since 2003, selling, producing, planting. So I have more knowledge than anyone who has a PhD. No one can tell me about weed from A to Z. So you can come with your PhD, but you can't tell me nothing about weed. I was telling this other group of farmers, professors and doctors, actually I was debating with them to tell them that you guys don't know nothing about weed. You must ask us who has the indigenous knowledge and greater understanding. We also have people that we grew up around, Bomkulu, who have been smoking this plant, calm, not being abusive, not being what what. Even how you tackle problems when you have consumed cannabis, it is different versus someone who tackles a problem who hasn't consumed cannabis. So there are many great effects that comes with this plant, just that you need to understand and have a mind of listening. Because this thing of of Guti, you will listen to someone because he's highly educated. I'm not going to listen to this one because this one didn't go to visit. It is nonsense. As Africans, some of us, we are privileged to be born with DNA memory. Meaning that some of us, we do things to a point where we don't understand how come I can be in a space of intellectual, yet I'm not educated. But they get to listen to what I have to say. Right now, I'm talking to people. Some people won't even know that I'm talking to, but I don't want to mention names because it is not about mentioning names. It is, it is, a, it, it is about teaching each other, each, each person, each African person to learn to listen to each and every person, regardless of the level they might come from. As long as they have the knowledge and the hours to back that up, that person is a master. You can't doubt that. Let's learn from other races no. in terms of how they grow Thank you for that point. Things. Thanks. Almighty. Almighty, I wasn't disputing that. Um, and thank you for um, also corroborating something that I feel very strongly about as a three-time dropout myself. I don't have any qualifications. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, man, yeah. so allow me to play devil's advocate. No um, problem. Devil's advocate. So the second thing I said is that under the condition that South Africans are in, how are we uh, uh, encouraging the recreational use of cannabis, knowing that the conditions and the, and the historical trauma, even that DNA memory that you're speaking about has trauma inside it, how, how is that um, congruent with now healing from this cannabis plant when we know that people uh, are prone to abuse um, drugs? That's why I say it is very important for us Africans to take this industry at its early stage so that we'll be able to come up with regulations that are necessary to prevent such things like you just say. But until we occupy that space, we cannot be a majority in this country. But the smoking weed that is produced by minorities how sure are you those minorities have concocted and put in things in those plants? We are not planting the food that we're eating. We, we can't complain if we're getting sick and cancer and whatnot in the future. If we were planting 
when we were owning the seed banks. We would be talking another story. Right now, people are talking about, hey, want to take over the farm, want to take over the land. How can you take over the land if you do not own the seed banks? You do not own the genetical modification of the seeds. You don't own that technology. Don't. How can you then want to take over land? So sometimes we need to think deeper. We need to think critically as Africans. Otherwise, we are just full of jokes. The other races are going to laugh and we're going to look stupid with all the qualifications that are there. And they are going to amount to zero. That's why when we go to certain spaces, I mean, I'm not educated, but I'm, I'm partnered with people that are highly educated. And believe you me, they are not black. Bangla Manyama race, but I don't want to mention that. They don't, if we communicate and says, discuss us on the table, no one says, hi, when you do not have the qualification. I have the experience they do not have in the field that they want to okay. participate in. Therefore, okay. they need me. Think I'm going to look at the qualification matter because I think you, you've explained that in, in six really. No one's disagreeing with you on the qualification part. Um, you spoke about other races now using their control of the cannabis plant to poison us. And we've seen how China has pumped a lot of fentanyl into America. Even that actor who acted on The Wire, um, that black actor, what is his name? Michael K. Williams or something died of a fentanyl overdose uh, because his uh, cannabis was laced with was with that. Now, can you please specifically tell us about the dangers of people poisoning the things that we eat, even when it comes to our food supply, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? Uh, I don't think I can be the only one who has more knowledge on that part you just asked about food poisoning no no, initial initial because it happens we we know it happens right in shabin so i want you to bring it back to in town and how we can prevent that happening obviously when we own the means of production if we own the means of production of the plant we will make sure obviously we we put in the necessary nutrients we do not put emma chemicals that are banned because they are chemicals that are banned in, in, in Europe, but are being used here in South Africa, which will lead to people having cancer in the future. But then it's not something most people are aware of either way. So I feel like sometimes speaking about these things, I, so it's a waste of time, but so if there are people that are, are, are conscious about this issue, they can add their two cents. I can keep quiet for the moment and allow others to add their, you know, opinion on this topic because i feel like maybe there are people in in this space that can add something to this topic can i mute now and give other people the opportunity to speak thank you so much the almighty that was a very very insightful um topic that you brought forth um things were getting a little bit out of hand and as much as the space is not the premise for, you know, serious topics, but I think it is very important for you to bring that to light. I'll definitely be DMing you. Um, Spunello, your hand has been up. Good morning to you all. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, yeah, I actually, I agree with the almighty. It's about time we realize that Africa is not a rubbish dump. If you come to realize the fact that there are so many rejected items that are being dumped in Africa from secondhand clothing to secondhand tires that are causing tire bursts on the highways to contaminated plants and genetically modified food, it's just ridiculous. And it's also just ridiculous how we constantly claim that we want to own the land, we want to own the land, but we don't know, we don't even farm our own food, we don't plow our own food. Most of our chickens are imported from Brazil, 17% of wheat is imported from Russia. It's ridiculous. Why can't we make use of this land in a way that is going to benefit us as a nation and protect us from global catastrophe like what we're experiencing now? It's about time we actually just own our own means. Thank you, Spanello. 
Um, but now the, I just wanted to ask, like, you know, the, the land issue here in South Africa, um, you know, especially um, with what the Almighty was saying, um, I'm sure there they have been a lot of, you know, South Africans that have wanted to venture into different types of farming. But unfortunately, um, you know, we don't own majority of the land in this country, you know. Um, so where where do we begin as Africans? Yeah, yeah. It's true. You know, we are, we definitely don't own most of the land and we can't, I don't, it's time we actually stop blaming people because, you know, the issue was that the transfer of knowledge when the transition happened in 94, the transfer of knowledge didn't happen. You know, we weren't educated by those who used to own the land, how to actually make use of the land. And that's where the issue actually starts because transfer of knowledge is a very big thing you know even in companies transfer of knowledge from the first generation to the second generation is very very important because how do you carry a legacy without knowing how things were done before most people do want to get involved in farming but they just don't know how to compete on a global scale they can only do small scale farming and you know what maybe that's a good place to start a lot of economists actually encourage small scale farming in africa that's a, a, a good place to start if you listen to a podcast that was done by david mashabella he was talking to an economist i can't remember what his name was but that was such an important conversation and i really wish that we could all just engage with that podcast and actually adopt that mindset that guy is ahead of his time and he's actually even challenging economy as it is written in textbooks right now he's challenging the fact that um you know apparently we are not allowed to well actually it's not encouraged yeah economically it's not encouraged that we should be printing money but he says we should be printing more money we shouldn't be sticking to the way things have the way we've been told that things should be done you know so i don't know man like we just need to engage on a level that is just a lot deeper than what we're doing now you know a lot of the time people think that oh because i am selling whatever it is that i'm selling i'm an entrepreneur you're not an entrepreneur if you can't spend three months away from your business without being directly involved in it you can't call yourself an entrepreneur we need to start with a basic understanding of what business is before we can even move forward as a country Spunelo. hello yes I, do you think we encourage and like embrace any of our entrepreneurs enough in this country absolutely not because you know what like entrepreneurship is the driver of an economy and we don't we don't acknowledge that enough we don't even understand what entrepreneurship is we don't know what exponentiality is scale we are just operating off of just day to day we are just surviving we need to yeah, start thinking big i understand that but i'm saying like why don't we identify those who are entrepreneurs and actually use them as case studies and actually try to to glean as much knowledge as we can from them because what you just said right what you just said like you got you can't be an entrepreneur unless you can step away from your business and everything else right mm. and all that type of stuff um so mina i'm an entrepreneur myself right i'm a business okay. person. i i okay. share knowledge about businesses i i work in the culture sector so okay. I am able to produce cultural products and then also market cultural products, right? Yes. Yes. So most of the cultural products that I've worked with in my business are catalog um, um, uh, cultural products. So my business just earns passive income through the consumption of, of cultural products. So I don't need to really like be there in my business. When I try yeah. to share the knowledge about my business, why is it? that someone who doesn't have knowledge about business is going to try and insult me personally instead of trying to take and hear the knowledge or like what prevents because i hear what you're saying right yeah. that there was a transfer of, uh, uh, of education from the apartheid system right i spoke on this space earlier i said that 
me, I learned entrepreneurship from my own family because my father was an entrepreneur back in the 80s. When I watched that that podcast, when your dad was explaining how he made his money, and it's also a very, it's a case study as well, because I mean, to be an entrepreneur in the apartheid era as well is a very big thing. I I watched that podcast. I know how, I know your dad's story. So what I'm trying to say is that when I share that story, people say, yeah, your dad was a sellout beggar in BNP. That's why he was able to make money during apartheid. So can you see how the mentality of our people to hate one another has been so conditioned that even if someone is trying to shine a light and trying to teach people and pull them out of the darkness and say, here's free knowledge, people will refuse that knowledge because it comes from a black person. Unfortunately, that's how it is in black culture. Sipega uguti uban okulumai. Siamtanda na asimtandi. Gunjalu. And for Nakona, I'm not saying good see people going against you because now in Nota, unfortunately, sometimes your delivery is a bit too aggressive and condescending. Melis Funde Ubuntu, we need to go back to Ubuntu. Says good see Umuntu Uyini. As in begging Ubuntu Nani, no good see Ubuya P. Simpega Uguts, Simpega Uguts, what contribution do they have? What are they saying? No ma anga peta, akulumis lungu esia left. The, the, point is it's the principle no ma anga yazim vocab and grammar and all of that it needs we need to do away with that i have a french boyfriend islung sake is not perfect but i can understand him and at the end of the day he's making huge moves globally so we need to start there Let's stop looking at Ubano Kuluma is long sakes in Gaganani. No, what's Ubuya? That's personal. And I'm yeah, okay. offending you. Yes. Have you ever dated a black man? Yes, I have. I've dated several black South okay. African No, no, no I, I, I'm not trying to judge you now. Now, yes. if you look objectively at the way the black men that you've dated were raised and their mental conditioning, and you compare it yes. to this French. French man that um, you are now currently with, right? Yes. Do you, do you think that what I've said about the way us as South Africans, we've been conditioned to hate each other and hate ourselves is the reason why maybe in those previous relationships with those black men, you didn't feel as fulfilled as you seem to feel now? Yeah, there definitely is an issue with the way the black boy, boy child is being raised in South Africa specifically. No, no, and not, 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 I'm not talking about the black boy child. I'm just talking about black people in general because you dated okay. men. And had, had, had you been with women, because you could be lesbian, right? Had you been, mm. I would have said the same thing, right? Okay. But I'm just saying that what, what I'm talking about